Hi guys, it's Jordan from B&B Campers. I'm just going to be doing a handover video on this Burstner Solano. Um, so it is based on the 57 plate Fio, Fiat Toccato. Um, and what I'll do is I'll sort of start showing you under the bonnet and then work my way around the outside before going on the inside. So over on the left-hand side of these newer style cabs, they give you pretty much all of the sort of consumable items or, you know, reservoirs and things like that over on this left hand side so we've got the washer fluid filling point just here power steering fluid engine coolant brake fluid and engine oil just down here the engine oil dipstick is this red top one just down here and we've got a couple of things in here that are handy to know so we've got the uh, paint code which is fiat 210 we've got the air conditioning information and the fact that you need that has been punched out, but the little bit on the inside hasn't come out. There you go. You need uh, 0.550 grams of the gas. Um, the weight plate and the chassis plate just there as well. Over on the right-hand side, we've got the air filter box just inside here and your uh, battery. Uh, this is basically a jump starting point for the engine battery. So if you wanted to jump start the vehicle battery, you've got a positive terminal just here and a negative one just here. So that is about it for under the bonnet really, there's not much else to them. Inside the passenger door, we've got the uh, bonnet release handle just there, swivel seat from this little handle just here. And if I just put the seat back a little bit, we've got under here, we have your electro block, uh, which is basically your power supply unit. So, um, any power, so from 240 volt or 12 volt or whatever, all the power goes into that electro block power supply unit and gets sent across the vehicle wherever it needs to go to. So that is basically the kind of the brain of the vehicle just there underneath your passenger seat. We've got the fuel filling point just inside this little locker here. That is your diesel filling point. Sorry about the sirens, we're on a bit of a main route for the uh, emergency vehicles here um the leisure batteries sit down here underneath this little hatch so we've got the twin varta batteries just down here um so seeing varta is always a good good sign it means it's been looked after and uh you know not been skimped out on on the price of you know things that are important like the batteries and things uh so that is your leisure battery area down there Freshwater filling point is from this bit just here. So you basically put the key in there and twist it whichever way it will go. And then this will come out in your hand. Nice windows on the side of the vehicle. No damage to them whatsoever. All in really good condition. Body work is much the same. As you can see. There you go. So um, inside this little cover here is your electric hookup point. And down below here is your wastewater drain off panel. So if you want to drain out the wastewater, you would drain it out from there. You've got a little handle just up there at the top and that is where you drain it from. So we've got access to the garage on this near side here. Now obviously this locker here is really small compared to the other side, which I'll show you in just a minute, but that is really handy access to this side. Just above that, we've got your toilet cassette locker. So this is a Thetford toilet cassette. Uh, you've got a fresh water flush on this particular cassette. So that means that you have to have a little bit of water in your fresh tank in order to, uh, to flush this toilet. So really simple um, to take it out. All you need to do is lift up on the little green tab just down here, and then the entire thing will come out. Um, from that point, all you need to know really is that there's a little green button at the back that you hold down as you empty it from here. And that your blue fluid typically is what you could put back inside here, you know, once you've drained it out basically. So about a cap or two full of the blue fluid, give it a little swoosh about and then push the cassette back in. So at the back of the van, um, if I just show you that now, so we've got the two bike bike rack with all the relevant parts. So you've got the um, clips here for the wheels, handles here for the top to hold the top of the bike sock. 
Below that, we've got the tow bar with all of the electrics and things like that there for that as well. So that is all in one piece and, you know, ready to be used. Um, center brake light just up there from the top and a little bit of greenery just there because we would have <laughs> parked it too close to one of the trees. Uh, so that is what that is there. Don't worry about that. Um, so inside the garage locker on the off side, as I said, is a much bigger locker. Um, really good access in here huge amount of space in here as well um, but one of the most important parts of the entire vehicle which you can get to from in here is this little hatch here so there is for the hatch itself you can cover it up with this little cover um, but a couple of really important things inside this locker or this little hatch so on the left hand side just here you see this little red pulley so at the moment that pulley is in its upright position and that means that the boiler is going to accept any water that you put into it. If you want to drain the boiler out, you push that little little red button down and any water inside the boiler will drain out onto the floor. So that is your boiler drain off point. To the right is another tank drain or a pipe drain. So if you wanted to drain out the water from the boiler and the pipes ready to winterize the vehicle, you push that little button down to drain the boiler out and lift that little yellow tab upright to drain all the pipes out. So that is a really handy little hatch there to give you access to both of those drains when it comes to winterizing. So, um, awning winder is in there as well and some of the original carpets in there. The awning itself sits just up there. It's a Fiamma F45i um, and it will come out about this far, you know, about another van's width. Um, it will come winding out to there. Um, there will be a couple of legs that you need to lift down out of the casing and down onto the floor. Uh, and that will basically just allow you to use that awning, you know, alongside the vehicle, stood up right on its own. A um, couple of bits to, to run you through on this side. So you've got this little vent just here that says Truma on it. This is your boiler vent. So when you've got the boiler lit up on gas, you will feel it pumping hot air out through the bottom of this. And that is also something that I like to mention that you can check. So if you wanted to double check the boiler was definitely working, you can put your hand over that and just double check that. These two vents just here to the right of that are both to do with your fridge and oven. So if you had the fridge lit up on gas, you should be able to hear a little bit of a burner noise just down there. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult to hear. But this is access to those. So the fridge and the cooker that's above the fridge attached, uh, you need access through those. You've got the D-bar slash uh, security handle just here. So you can pull down this little handle here and then the bar will fold open. I can't do it with one hand, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's how that works. You can use it as a lock or as a handle to help you get in. So, the last locker on the outside is going to be your gas locker just here. So the gas locker itself is plenty big enough for two of these six kilo propanes. Uh, it looks to me as if you can fit a slightly bigger bottle in there as well, maybe a 13 or an 11. Um, but the majority of people, to be honest with you, will just stick to using these um, six kilo propane bottles. So if I want to show you how to turn it on, we go anti-clockwise around to the left to turn the bottle on and clockwise around to the right will turn it off um, so you need to make sure that you uh, put that bottle uh, turn it bottle off before you start driving uh, it's just a you know a bit of a fail safe thing you, the last thing you want is a you know pressurized gas coming through if you're in a crash or something so make sure that you turn that off before you start driving um, but yeah there you go regulator looks pretty new to me if i'm honest and those little fittings just there look new as well and the pigtail hose we've got on here is 2021 so you've got till 26 to replace that right so um another little burstner chassis plate just there and then i'll show you in the cab so the cab itself is a nice high spec you've got some nice little extra bits and pieces on here so you've got this uh, blind that comes across from there and here as well that is on both sides like so we've then got the reversing camera screen just up there attached to the center mirror the six speed manual gearbox cruise control from that little stalk just there 
Um, you've also got the air conditioning from this little button here. I think, might be wrong, but I'm pretty certain that uh, those Blaupunk uh, stereos were the original fitted ones. Um, so, you know, it's a nice original thing. I'm pretty certain they are. Um, so yeah, uh, you got the hazard warning lights just there from the middle. You can lock and unlock the cab from those two buttons just there, which is always really handy in a motorhome. Uh, you have also got the blinds that come across in the middle for the for the main windscreen here as well. Um, so they will just basically meet up in the middle uh, and lock together. But as for the cab, to be honest, it's the, it's all pretty self-explanatory. There's not really much else for me to run you through in here. So what I'll do is I will jump into the back of the van now and I'll just show you through some of the appliances and what we've got going on in here. So um, the layout in this particular vehicle is what I think is pretty much the perfect layout where you've got the swivel front seats so you can have those swiveled right the way around. You've got the extendable table so if you do need a little bit more space on that table you can extend the bottom part around to make it quite a lot bigger. Um, loads of light coming in through this massive skylight above here as well. You've got the two over the shoulder seat belts just there so you can travel with four people and the side seat just here. Now this will make into a small double slash single bed. So it couldn't be easier how it works. You literally pull this little piece just here forwards all the way up to this table. The table will drop down half height because you've got a removable piece at the bottom just here and another little runner across the back just there. So that table will drop down, as you can see, to the sort of height of the base of the seat just there. And then this this one will sort of slide forward. Uh, so you just use all these cushions up. So it does make into a little bed. Um, I would say personally, uh, it's probably a single bed for an adult, possibly two, but easily for two kids um, to be in there. But there you go. That's why a lot of the time you'll see that if anyone's advertising a vehicle with this particular layout, obviously depending slightly on the vehicle itself and the size of these cushions and things, um, but they'll often advertise them as a three slash four berth uh, because, you know, realistically, it's, it's not going to be particularly comfortable for two adults, um, but, you know, you could do it. Um, lots of paperwork in this brown folder over here. I will put that in the cupboard in just a minute after the video. Um, some spare infill cushions back here from when the vehicle was bought new. Uh, and obviously all the original, this is all the original fabric here from Burstner. This bed will lift up to allow you access to a you know, couple of things. Uh, you've got your gas isolator points inside there, which you can also get to a little bit easier from inside this cupboard. But what I'll do first, uh, now that I've just sort of shown you the layout here, I will show you through the control panel and all of this stuff up here. Uh, and then I'll start running you through the appliances sort of individually. So the control panel on these particular bursters are really, really simple, nice and easy to use. Uh, but also, um, I, I must admit, I don't think I've ever had a problem with any of these. And they all seem, you know, a lot of the time the control panels will be good enough, but there'll be certain bits and pieces that don't work. These are always really good. So that's a really nice thing. Uh, on the right hand side of the control panel itself here, you'll see you've got a 12 volt symbol and a circuit breaker symbol. So basically push up to turn the 12 volt on and down to turn the 12 volt off. Okay. You'll also see, uh, I know it's written in German, but... You'll see just ab above here, this is a really important little scale. Um, you might not think that it is because it looks a little bit confusing, but all it means, so you've got a little A in the corner there, that stands for amps. All it means is wherever that bar is, and it's really, really sensitive, wherever that bar is, if it's slightly below zero where it is now, it means that there's more power being drawn from the leisure battery than there is being put in. So you'll notice when I turn this 12 volt power off, it should go back to the middle. And the reason it goes back to the middle 
is because there's no power, there's no lights on, there's no, you know, nothing's being drawn from the ledger battery. So we're at an even point just there for that. When I turn it back on, if I start going around and turning all the lights on, um, you know, oh, let's just go and put a load of stuff on, there already are quite a few lights on. Um, I could do various things and start drawing more power. But the more that you do, the more that arm will go down towards the left. Okay, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't mean that you're going to immediately run out of power. It just means that if there's a lot of power being drawn, so if there's a lot, a lot of amps on the minus side, on the red side of that, then your leisure batteries are being, you know, there's power being drawn from them. If you're hooked up on the mains, then technically that bar should go up into the green a little bit because it will be showing you the amount of amps that are being put into the leisure batteries. So it's not necessarily always going to be down in the red, uh, because if you, again, if you're hooked up, there should be power going into it. But it's just about keeping this, as, you know, as close to the middle as you can in an ideal world. But if you're wild camping, you know, of course, you're going to be drawing more power from the leisure battery than you're going to be putting in. It's quite normal. Um, but I thought I would just run you through what that was. Next door to that, we've got the water pump switch just here. This is a submersible pump, which means that, yes, you have to turn the power on just here on the control panel, but because it works on 12 volt power and little micro switches inside the taps, the, pumps, the pump itself will not turn on until you physically tell it to by turning the tap on. Unlike a lot of other vehicles where they've got what you call an inline pump, um, which basically means that the when you turn the pump switch on up here, if you had an inline pump, the pump would run itself up until it gets to a certain amount of pressure and then it would turn itself off. Whereas with the submersible pumps like this one, it just turns on and off as and when it needs to. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Left of that again, we've got these two bits in the middle. So these are basically just... Uh, you know, you can set your time on there. You've got internal temperature and external temperature, both the same now. Uh, so that is what that bit there is in the middle. And on the left hand side, we've got probably the more important part of the uh, control panel. Um, we've got your battery voltages and water levels. So let's just say we wanted to check the fresh water level in the tank so that we know if we need to put any water in before we leave. If I wanted to check the fresh water level, I press up on this little one just here, and then I look at the bottom scale that says tank, which is the blue one. So if I press that, there you go. So at three, you know, three, qu three quarters of a uh, of a tank of fresh water in the in there at the moment. So um, let's just say roughly, and now don't hold me to it because they're all very, very different, but let's just say roughly 100 litres uh, would be full, so you're at sort of 75 litres there. So quite a lot of water in there at the moment. Um, if you want to see the waste tank level, push down, and it's showing us completely empty, and that's because our waste drain is open uh, on the outside, so it's just been draining out constantly. To the left of that, we've got your battery voltages. So if I press up, it comes up there showing us the leisure battery voltage, which is the top scale there. 12 and a half volts, absolutely perfect for a battery voltage that isn't being charged by the charger. Um, the bottom one isn't wired up. So, you know, one of those things, some of them are, some of them aren't, but uh, as long as you can start the engine up, you're good to go. Um, but yeah, so the ledger battery voltage is the one that's actually important, to be honest, because if you're going away, if you say, for example, you want to go, um, I don't know, if you were going to go on holiday, when you start the engine up, you've got something called a split charger. So the split charger uh, essentially means that the alternator that normally charges just the engine battery also sends a feed to the leisure batteries down there. And that means that all the time that you're driving, the vehicle is charging the leisure batteries as well. So that when you get to where you're going, technically speaking, your leisure batteries should be pretty well topped up um so that is the idea behind that and you can just double check that leisure battery voltage from there just below that we've got your main socket 
12 volt socket and an aerial point. Now you don't need that aerial point, I don't think, uh, because, well actually no, it's wired in like that. Uh, sorry, let me just get my head around that. No, so you don't need this socket just here, all right, because you've got a booster just underneath here. So if you had a TV hooked up onto this sort of arm just here, which is a really kind of universal one here, so you should be able to, any sort of motorhome specific TV should either go onto these inner ones or the outside ones, normally the outside ones, um, and then you'll be able to adjust it wherever you want. And the beauty with this is that you can put it all the way over here for the, for the you know, watching it in bed or over here to watch it in the dinette. So if you wanted to hook up a TV to this area here, you've got your mains point just there, which will work when your electric hookup is plugged in. You've got your 12 volt socket just there, which will work all the time that your 12 volt switch is on. And you've got TV one or TV two on the booster. So you've got your antenna in, is going into the booster, switch the booster on, and then hook your telly's uh, signal feed up to that TV one socket, and you will have uh, a really good signal coming through that. So that is how you would hook up your telly. Right, so let me just make sure there's nothing else obvious that I need to run through. Right, so you've got, you'll notice as well, just up here, you've got this Dometic remote. The Dometic remote is linked up to your air conditioning unit, which is a really nice extra to have. Um, the aircon units are unbelievably expensive to buy, let alone fit. Um, so a really, really handy thing to have already. Um, so the Dometic units are a mains powered unit only. So this unit will not do anything at all unless you have a hookup cable plugged into the van. Okay, so please don't sort of expect it to, <laughs> to work. If, you, if you're not hooked up on the mains, or, you know, in your wild camping or whatever, it won't do anything at all. Um, but if you are hooked up on the mains, you should be able to turn this on with this remote here and it should just spring to life. If for whatever reason you find that when you plug the hookup cable in, you don't get any lights on here and you can't get it to turn on, there should really be a isolator for it somewhere or rather. Um, it'll be somewhere obscure, I would imagine. Um, but I will have a little look for that just to see if I can find one. Um, but yeah, if, to be honest, when you plug the hookup cable in, it probably will just spring to life. But um, if it doesn't, as I said, there should be a little isolator for it somewhere. Um, anyway, I won't waste time looking for that right now. Uh, so we've got down here to the left of that, just to the right of the door, we have got the um, the boiler controls. So you've got what's called a Truma Combi boiler. Um, it doesn't mean combi in the sense that you get instant hot water like you would at home. It just means combi because it does heating and hot water. So um, the way that I like to explain these ones, because some people do get a little bit mixed up with them, uh, is that you've got two dials. The reason you've got two dials is because one of them tells the boiler what to do and the other one tells the boiler how to do it. So the one at the bottom just here is the one that tells it how to do it. And that is because it's your energy selector. So it basically tells it whether to use gas or electric or both at the same time. So at the moment, we are down here on the little gas symbol. So that means that whatever we tell the boiler to do up here, it's gonna do it on gas. If I was hooked up on the mains, I could go up one or up two to electric one or electric two, uh, which is about four amps and eight amps. And basically that will just start, you know, working the boiler via the electric hookup. If I had both on at the same time and I was in a bit of a hurry for whatever I was telling it to do up here, I can choose electric one and gas or electric two and gas. So that's both at the same time. For the most part, you're gonna leave it there on gas only. I certainly can't use it on any other way at the moment because I've only got the gas on. The one above it is telling the boiler actually what you want it to do. So you've got <coughs> up one or two is hot water only, and that's either at 40 or 60 degrees. Back to the middle turns the boiler off. If I didn't want the hot water, but I did want the heating, 
I would go down once, and that is our hot, uh, that's our heating only. And if I go down two, that's our heating and hot water. So a lot of the older units, I mean, I'm talking years ago now, but they used to literally just have summer and winter. So the idea behind that was that, you know, summer would be your setting going up because it's hot water only and no heating. And winter would be your setting going down because it's heating and hot water at the same time. All right, but that's how you use those two dials just there. Really, really simple. And then back to the middle just here, turns the boiler completely off. Okie doke. So um, that is about it for that, you know, for the combi controls. It's, it's you know, pretty simple, really. Um, so the next thing I'm going to show you is going to be your um, oven and grill. So the oven and grill up here is basically part of this same one unit okay so it's what you would call uh well it's a stacked style fridge um and as i say basically that just means that you've got the fridge down here part of the same unit and the same gas feed as the um the oven and grill so um if you wanted to light the grill up we use this dial over here on the right hand side it's got an automatic ignition so if i push in and round to the right The grill lights up nice and easily like so i've let go of that now so that's working really nicely and if i want to light the oven up i'll push in and round to the left and fingers crossed the oven will light up like so all right so that is how you light up the oven and the grill back to the middle or back to the top turns the oven and grill off now underneath that we have got the three-way fridge this is a dometic three-way fridge and it works in three different ways because you've got these three options you have also got the auto function but all that actually does is it selects one of these three options for you automatically so if you want to leave it on auto you can do but i will explain to you how to use it on the manual mode as well so if I just turn this off completely for a minute, I will show you what it's going to be like uh, from startup. First thing I need to explain about these and every motorhome fridge really is that the only two ways that the fridge will get cold by itself. So say, for example, because the fridge isn't cold right now, if I was going to go away on a holiday today, I would want to light this fridge up on gas or use it on the mains for a good couple of hours before we left. OK, because... The 12 volt function here at the bottom, this little battery symbol, is for when you're driving, keeping it cold whilst you drive, and it only really holds the temperature that you've already put in the fridge. Okay, if you didn't select 12 volt, the fridge would warm up whilst you drive, uh, and if you do have it on 12 volt, it will stay cold, but it's not really powerful enough to get the fridge cold by itself. So you do need to pre cool it before you leave, either on gas or the mains, and then switch over to 12 volt whilst you drive. So if I want to light it up on the gas, because at the moment I haven't got the electric hookup plugged in, if you want to light it up on the gas, once to the right, and immediately the flame lights up by itself. Literally as easy as that. If you've turned the gas on, if you just turn the gas back on again, it might take a few more clicks for it to actually light up, but that is genuinely all you have to do. It will light up by itself, and then you've literally just got a little gauge over here on the right-hand side. The next one lights up red because we haven't got the electric hookup plugged in. If you were hooked up on the mains, you can use that one as an alternative to the gas, uh, but it would light up green. Same goes for the 12 volt. That will also light up red because we haven't got the engine running, and it needs the engine running in order to work. So as I said, you can use the auto function. If I just select auto quickly, it chose gas for us straight away because the gas is the only function that we can use. So same goes, if we were hooked up on the mains, it should just automatically choose mains. And if we started the engine up, it should automatically choose 12 volt. And there you go. So freezer compartment at the top, nice and clean. 
bottom. I'll just unlock it. There you go. Uh, fridge part of the bottom there, also very clean. So, um, that's going to annoy me now that I won't be able to, that I haven't found that, <laughs> that mains isolated for that. I will have a little look for one. Um, right, so the three burner hob over here on this side. Now, there isn't any ignition for these, so you will need a lighter or something like that in order to light these up. The long reach candle lighters are normally the best ones to use for those. Um, only other thing I like to mention on these is please allow all of these to cool right down before you start putting this lid down. Um, if you put the lid down too quickly after using it, you will shatter that lid. Okay, then nothing obvious to run through in there. Loads of storage in there though. Same goes for under there as well. Okay, um, massive wardrobe in here, loads of storage in there, and your trip switches down here. Right, okay, we're getting somewhere now. So, um, <laughs> so on the left-hand side just here, I can see normally the factory fitted um, isolators are just the two on the right, okay? So I'm pretty certain that if you were to trip the switch on the left-hand side there, the Hager one, the one with the blue on it, that should turn the power off from the aircon unit. All right, so that's that's like an additional thing there. So I'm pretty certain that's going to be your isolator for the aircon unit. Right, good. So the last thing I need to show you is going to be the bathroom. Um, and the bathrooms don't take very long because it's literally just a case of this is a hot and cold tap, just like the sink. Same goes for the shower up there. Um, the toilet is normally the only part that I actually run through because it's like, you know, you might not have used one of these particular ones before. Um, so as I said before, you do need to make sure that you've got some water in your fresh tank in order to flush this toilet. But basically push the blue button just here. And it pumps around your flush fluid. To drain it out into the cassette, Pull this handle towards you. That drains everything into the cassette and then push it back away. And that is it. That is all you have to do. Right, so I think I've covered everything. If there is anything you think I've missed out or anything you want going over again, just let us know. But otherwise, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks very much.